Tony, real photographers don't use digital cameras. No, that's too easy. That, that's just one of the many things I've heard about what makes a real photographer. And it makes me so sad because sometimes we get messages from you saying, I want advice on a camera, but I'm not a real photographer, but I do want a new camera because I take pictures every day. It's kind of gatekeeping for people to always be saying, what makes a real photographer? What makes a fake photographer? So we're gonna go over what people say about real photographers and then tell you what we think makes a real photographer. I don't know what makes a real photographer, but I do know what makes a real website. And that is Squarespace. Squarespace.com slash Chelsea gets you started with a free trial. Set up your website, make it look beautiful, whether it's for your photography business, your video business, your dental business, or any project you can imagine. This is the perfect place to start. Right now, go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea. Try it out for free. After you love it, the coupon code Chelsea will get you 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace. I saw comments that, that said real photographers don't have Squarespace ads. I kid you not. Wow. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and I get this a lot. Tony's not a real photographer. He's a YouTuber. They're influencers, not photographers. Because those two things can never overlap. You can never be influential on social media and also be a photographer. As soon as you start influencing, selling stuff, whether it's your, your books or you're doing advertisements or you're taking sponsorships, suddenly you lose the title of real photographer. I have an example. One such person, maybe some of you might think he was a real photographer, but clearly he's not based on this ad. Now, he's going to do something awful. He claimed to be an environmentalist. He claimed to be a naturalist. He claimed to work closely with John Weir to start up the U.S. National Forest System. But here he is shilling internal combustion engine vehicles. Sounds like a shill and shill. a fake photographer. Ansel Adams, conservationist, outdoorsman, considered the nation's finest nature photographer. I've spent most of my life photographing nature. What impresses me is the constantly renewing cycle of nature of which man is a part. But for some time now, we have been interfering with this cycle. Now it's up to man to protect and replenish nature. So when I heard what that city is doing, I was really eager to help. From now until October the 15th, when you test drive a new Datsun, Datsun will pay the U.S. Forest Service to plant a tree in the National Forest. This Datsun 510 wagon is a lot of wagon for not much money. This sort of conservation is as important to you as this forest is to me. So do something nice for both of us. Drive a Datsun, plant a tree. Okay, that... I always find that funny <laughs> because <laughs> Ansel Adams is literally selling cars, but people don't think about the fact that you know Ansel Adams and all of his work because of all the self-promotion that he did. And I think of Ansel Adams as the original photography influencer. And that is going to make people recoil a little bit because we have demonized the very word influencer because there have been bad examples. And whenever people talk about influencers, it rolls off their tongue like they just it's hate a four letter it. word right but that is not true there have always been influencers becoming a known photographer is largely about finding ways to promote yourself or else nobody sees your work a good example of that is the fact that these pictures that you've been looking at were not taken by ansel adams they were taken by clyde butcher another photographer that i actually like his work a little bit more than ansel adams oh wow yeah, I don't think that one makes any sense at all. Not just for us, but when I was researching this podcast, I found people talking about Peter McKinnon and saying he's not a real photographer. And I just think his work is beautiful and he's wonderful. He, an amazing photographer. And an amazing storyteller. And I think that it's so odd that when someone just doesn't like something about a person, they'll say they're not a real photographer. And I know you've all experienced it if you're in forums. Yeah, so if you attack me or Peter McKinnon, you're also attacking Ansel Adams. And how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> so we have heard from a lot of you that you don't feel like real photographers. So let's dig into some of the silly things people say and kind of debunk the myths of what makes a real photographer. I've heard real photographers don't use auto mode. Whenever what about a P is for professionals? Yeah, or like P mode or shutter priority or aperture priority or auto ISO, any kind of auto mode. A lot of people feel like, 
oh, well, that's not what real photographers do. They only use manual mode. I have not found that to be true. I have had the privilege to meet many, many, many talented professional photographers, and they're not afraid to just use whatever settings get the job done and get the image that they want. And I, I don't want to name names, but I have heard people sort of slandering some of the biggest names in the industry saying that they're, they don't know what they're doing because they don't even know how to set their aperture. Yeah. They, they have their assistant set up the camera and then hand it to them and they just take the pictures. Therefore, they're not a real photographer. But it's not about camera settings. It was never about camera settings. That's ridiculous. There's a whole saying, F8 and be there. Yeah. And it's not really about using F8. It's about your camera settings don't matter. It's everything else. It's like being at the spot at the right time, in the right location, getting yourself there. That is the photography, not dialing in numbers. Yeah, and obviously your settings can help you tell a story, but I think the point is that if you don't feel like you are the most technical photographer, that doesn't mean you're not a real photographer. Don't let people put you down just because you're more creative than techie. Photographers come in all shapes and sizes, so to speak. I've also heard people say, real photographers don't shoot in JPEG. That's a big one. And um, it's just quite frankly not true. There are plenty of very high level professional photographers that need to get their work off to their editors very quickly. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily matter if they shoot in RAW. I shoot in RAW plus JPEG. I do like both. But well, what are they doing if they're like they have to shoot JPEG? I mean, I know it's not photography because they're clearly not photographers <laughs> if they're shooting JPEG. Like photojournalism, sports, things like that. Oh, those people aren't photographers, no, I guess. No, they're not, I guess. Ooh, I should probably call some people. It's so ridiculous. I know, like, our friend Jared, yeah. I have much respect for him. Yeah. He has used the raw format as part of his marketing. But you don't have to, it, nobody needs to demonize people who don't use the same file format as them. Yeah. It's just a, it's just minor, tri oh, trivial Oh, yeah, people think, are going to think this is a swipe at Jared. It's not. This is just general things that we hear. Yeah. Um, and then I've also heard people say that real photographers don't use autofocus. Like if you talk about a new camera's autofocusing capabilities or eye autofocus or animal detect autofocus, you're always going to get people that say, well, I don't need that. Back in my day, blah, 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 we didn't have that. Ansel Adams didn't have it's that. Always, Ansel Adams it's, always comes up. It's the only photographer people know. Yeah, <laughs> so why is like, that? they're like, Ansel Adams didn't have that. Yeah, why is that? That's really strange. Um, but these are all just settings and people feel like, Real photographers don't use specific settings, and... Some real photographers have not needed those. That is true. Yeah. But using those things does not make you lose that title. It is not mutually exclusive. Yeah, of course. There, I've heard, I've interviewed professional photographers that really had bad feelings about what other people did with their cameras. <laughs> but that doesn't make them more of a real photographer. And then also, have you heard the one like real photographers don't use a high frame rate? Like who oh, needs... This only comes up when we get a new camera that has a higher frame rate yeah. than what another person is using. Yeah. So, when the Sony A1 came out and it shot 30 frames per second, throughout the comments, Real photographers only need one frame per Spray second. Spray and pray. It's Real like, photographers don't do that. Like the guy on the sidelines of the Super Bowl. He just like picks up his camera, take takes one picture, and then he just drops it and walks away without even looking back. He just needs that one frame because he's the real photographer. He, and he zooms with his feet, and that's why he's had 52 concussions. <laughs> And then there's also like the gear snobs and this one gets me the most because they're often conflicting. Real photographers don't use digital cameras was a huge one when digital cameras first came out. I believe that's why DP Review, the website, is successful because I was shooting film and then I got a digital camera and I tried to hang out in the same forums like photo.net and at the time people were real snarky with you if you were using a digital camera because really? they didn't think you were... And, and then. DP review came around and suddenly there was a home that would accept me. <laughs> oh, that was your first home. Well, when I switched to digital because I got rejected by the even though I had previously been shooting film. So th th this existed because the whole community had to be divided. Wow. This yeah. snobbery has been around too long. But it ha it's it. happened again with smartphones. Yeah, and that's I think it's the same exact thing. So this happened when people went from film to digital, and then it happened from DSLRs to mirrorless. Remember, mm. mirrorless cameras were just little fidgety toys, and no one with real man hands could use them. And... Yeah, they call them bridge cameras. Yeah. Like, if they're a bridge from your point and shoot to a real camera. Like, someday soon, you could be a real photographer. Yeah. Mm, not there yet. So we always get this misconception too because we'll review pro cameras and people always think we mean 
only pros shoot with that camera, but what we just mean is that like it was developed with pros in mind, like weather sealing and like redundancies, like two card slots, that's a redundancy so you don't lose your photo, things like that. But people are always like, pro photographers don't use that. And it's like, no, it's not, it doesn't work that way. I literally found a quote from somebody in a forum saying somebody was not a real photographer because they did not have a vertical grip on their camera. Was it me? I swear they were not being ironic about it. <laughs> it gets so specific. Like they have to be using the exact gear that you're using in order to be a real photographer. I know. I remember when we were doing the Z9 video and you were like, you're not using the vertical grip. People are going to roast you. And I was like, I hate it. It's uncomfortable. I don't want to use it. I just had this memory. But early in our career, we did, we compared the Canon 7D to the Sony a6000. And we decided that the Canon had better autofocus than the Sony. Somebody in the DP review forums was so mad, they said that I was not a real photographer. And their reasoning was that they Googled me. And when they looked at Google Images, it showed pictures of me and not pictures by me. And thus, the Google Image algorithm determines whether or not you're a real photographer. And I did not pass that muster. Thus, my review of the A6000 was completely meaningless. Somehow, the Google image algorithm impacts the autofocus performance of the Sony A6000. <laughs> and physicists haven't figured out this connection yet. <laughs> you know, the world works in mysterious ways. Yeah, don't you don't you? need a firmware update. What you need <laughs> is to talk to Google. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's also this thing where if a new camera comes out and it's really expensive, people will be like, real photographers don't need the newest and the best gear, right? <laughs> no. Yeah, they can't use but, the low-end gear. They can't use the high-end gear. Yes, but they also don't use smartphones. Mm -hmm. So do you see where we're going with this? If you're feeling down, if you're feeling like you're not a part of the photo community, it's like, I understand why, but it's not really, it doesn't really matter. These people are not correct. You can be shooting with your smartphone. You can be using auto settings. You could have another job. You could be sponsored. None of that means that you're not a real photographer. You could even be an, an influencer. We will God find forbid. out if you're a real photographer because I have an eight question quiz coming up. But first, Chelsea's going to tell you about our sponsor, Squarespace. Yeah, you don't have to be a photographer at all to have a Squarespace because it's just an easy to make website. Now, we do happen to have them for our photography. I do not want a social media algorithm dictating which ones of my photos you see. So you go to my website, you see my favorite work there, not chronological, but the stuff I want you to see. And then I also sell prints. I book clients. I put my client galleries in there. That's right, I don't just make YouTube videos. I have clients, but I don't share their photos because they do not let me do that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but go get your own for free, 14 days, nothing to lose. Go to squarespace.com slash Chelsea, use the coupon code Chelsea and get 10% off. Before we get into your quiz on what makes a real photographer, I just want to go over some more of these real photographer myths I've heard because I think they're kind of funny. I think they're a little bit amusing. One of them is, was real photographers don't use Photoshop. Do you remember that whole movement? Yes. And real photographers don't edit. That was a big one. Like, oh, you're editing too much to be a real photographer. I'm having one of those Magnum PI style of Vietnam War flashbacks, but it's just <laughs> Moose Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got ripped apart by Moose Peterson yeah. so bad. Uh, I do remember for like years after that interview, people were like, are you okay? <laughs> We've been Bruce through it. Photoshop his <laughs> wildlife images and he really roasted everyone. He roasted the whole world. Him. But I think one of the most interesting things when you're learning the history of photography is just how much manipulation was done in the dark room way before Photoshop. There was dodging and burning and they were combining, they were comping multiple pictures. There was collage going on. Yeah, Ansel Adams wrote a book about post processing, but it was in the dark room. Yeah. It was basically Photoshop in the dark. Yeah, so people will say Ansel Adams didn't have Photoshop. Well, like, he would have used it if he'd had it. Yeah, he would have loved that. <laughs> yeah. Another one is photographers don't take sponsorships. Like, of course they do. You see the sidelines when pros are shooting games or the Olympics. Like, you know a lot of photographers are sponsored by the brand, right? Yeah. What, what else? Real photographers don't eat. They just take <laughs> pictures until they're, they slowly deteriorate and then they die in the street. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's always been a part of it, whether you're taking a sponsorship from a brand or working for a magazine or something like you get endorsements, you don't just get straight pay. 
yeah, we're, we are here because we love photography and we thought of a way where we could have a lifestyle and do what we love. I just go out and I take whatever pictures I want and I can make this video and it will pay for that and I will do a whole photo shoot with whoever I want and uh, you guys are kind of the ones sponsoring me actually. <laughs> hey, <it's> true. <laughs> Um, and then real photographers don't teach. This one absolutely breaks my heart. Can I tell you the quote I always see? What? Those who can do, those who can't teach. How, how are you going to slam Teachers? every educator out there? Your kindergarten teacher, your college professor, you're just going to slam them all to attack people who make free tutorials on YouTube to teach you photography tips. Yeah, but that's also absurd because there are really high level photographers who shoot for magazines like National Geographic and then they do tours where they teach or they do lectures or they write books or the how Annie Leibovitz Masterclass. Yes, or the Masterclass series where you have all of these amazing people. Or Ansel Adams books. It always <laughs> comes back to him. He did all of this stuff. But that's just an absurd th and mean thing to say. I don't like that. And and not just because I teach, but because I just <laughs> but think partly it's for so that. Part partially, I'll admit it. Real photographers make a hundred percent of their income from taking pictures. That's right. Real photographers, they don't own any QQQ. They don't have any index funds or anything. They don't mm -mm. make any money. Mm -mm. No, they don't uh, do any side work. No, they only take pictures and sell the results of those pictures. Yeah, but you know, first of all, obviously that's not true. We just talked about workshops and, and uh, lectures and books and things like that, or writing for magazines, all the number of different things you can do when you're pro. But the other thing is that these are the same people that slam you if you're like a family portrait photographer. You know, like they'll be like, well, they're not a real photographer. They take pictures of babies. So don't feel like you're not good enough. They're going to find a way to put anyone down because I think the real thing that these people are saying is I'm not confident in my status. So I'm going to gatekeep and make all these fake rules to keep everyone out and keep the little club smaller because I'm feeling threatened by new technology or people who are taking good pictures on auto or people who are using their phones or how much easier editing has gotten now that it's in Lightroom instead of the darkroom and it's like just their little way of trying to protect their little space. I also want to add so many of my favorite photographers are they don't make a penny from it and they probably never will. They're weekend warriors. They're after work. They're squeezing every free second they have between work and family responsibilities to go do something that they're passionate about. Or just the hobbyists, like look at Vivian Mayer. You should look up her photos. She's an incredible photographer, but nobody knew it till she died and they found like 150,000 film photos. She's famous now, but she never made money. She never got recognition until she was already dead. But even when people didn't know she was a real photographer, she was. And think of our friend Chris Rao. He was a chef full time, but he took amazing wildlife photos. Yeah, All and of the he time. would be working up until like 10 minutes before he had to put his fancy white hat on. Yeah. <laughs> Every second he had, he'd be out there in the field. Rainy days, snowy days, when I wouldn't go out, he'd be out there just mm -hmm. getting soaked. So let's talk about what defines a real photographer. These are, this is what we think. I'd love to hear your ideas in the comments down below too. You have to have a green hoodie and a mug that looks like this. Yeah, you have to be wearing these pants and be named Chelsea. No, but I think that a real photographer takes photos with intention. And I don't think that it has to be about what camera you have, what settings you know, how long you've been doing it, if you make money. I don't think any of that matters. I think that a real photographer is someone who enjoys the process and analyzes taking their pictures. And it doesn't have to be that deep. It's when you find a beginner and they say, the moon looks so big with my eye, but when I take a picture, it looks really small. Why is that? and they try to get a better picture next time. Or they say, this sunset is beautiful, but something about the colors isn't really registering. Maybe I have to change the composition, or maybe I should put something in the foreground. I think that that process and that mindset is the most important part of a photographer and not any of the other stuff. Yeah, as long as they're not using a Fuji. Tony, joking. I made a quiz with eight questions. Okay. And it's like, you ever go through the DSM-5? If you answer seven of these 10 questions, you're a sociopath. Anyway, here's eight questions. If you answer one of these questions, yes, you're a real photographer. And uh, you know what, Chels? If you answer any of these questions, yes, follow along. You can take a drink. This is like never have I ever. Have some of my whiskey. Is that really whiskey? Yeah. If you have ever broken gear, you're a real photographer. 
Oh, she's going to be hammered. No, I haven't. Uh, you spit on a camera sensor one time trying to clean it. <laughs> if you've ever broken a rule or a law, you're a real photographer. Oh, please, I've seen you climb so many fences. Remember Iceland, you like hopped a barbed wire fence to get closer to one of those furry cows? Where's my lawyer? <laughs> I need my lawyer. Um, if anybody has ever asked you to bring your camera to an event or take pictures of their kids or their wedding, you're a real photographer. I'm having flashbacks. <laughs> if you have ever gone to take a picture and started to rearrange stuff to make the picture look a little bit better, you're a real photographer. If you've ever gotten mad at your camera or your tripod, you're going to need more whiskey. You're a real photographer. Going right into Jeff Foxworthy. <laughs> if you've ever taken a special trip because you knew the light or the location was going to be great to take a picture, and if you ever planned a photo around the timing, like going out right when the sunset is or the sunrise or the clouds are nice today or we can't go out because overcast, or if you just know a spot, if there's a go-to spot like, oh, you guys, should, you, you, you look nice today. You have a nice dress for prom. We should go to this place. Yeah. You're a photographer. So you're probably hammered off of my green tea now. It is green Because I saw you drink at every single one of those. And if you answered yes to one of those, you're a photographer. I, knowing a spot seems real loose. <laughs> <laughs> just no. knowing a spot? Like for a photo in particular though, right? For a photo, not just knowing a location. <laughs> Everybody can name a location. <laughs> no, I mean like everyone knows like a nice location, but they don't necessarily take a picture there. Yeah, a nice location for photos. Okay. That's very <laughs> loose and generous, but I like it. More but inclusive. They meet your criteria of having an intention to create. That's true. Okay, now you're, you're becoming what you hate. <laughs> I just like knowing a spot, but you're right. I know. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Okay, in the comments down below, tell us what you think makes a real photographer or tell us what nonsense people have told you made you not a real photographer. I know people have told you stuff compared gear, the quality of gear. If your gear was too expensive, not expensive enough, if you were doing your settings properly, if you got things in focus the right way, if your processing was too much, too little, in between, I know people are always trying to gatekeep and you probably experienced it. So. Our takeaway is if you're here and you like taking pictures, you're a real photographer. You're a part of our club. And subscribe for more real photography stuff, tutorials. We have some reviews coming up for stuff that's still secret that we can't even tell you about. Mm. And thank you to our sponsor, Squarespace, which is the absolute best way to show off your work, photos, videos, or whatever personal project you have in mind. You can sell stuff. You can view detailed analytics and figure out how people are finding you. Use your social media but drive people to your real website where you control the branding, the colors, the style, and there's no ads for your competitors. Get started today at squarespace.com slash Chelsea. You'll have a free trial. You don't have to put a credit card in or anything. Try it out, see if you like it. If you do, the coupon code Chelsea gets you 10% off. Thank you, Squarespace, and thanks all of you. If you want to see more of the picture of this podcast, you can get it wherever podcasts are available or go to our playlist where we have a picture of this podcast and everyone we've ever made. Thanks. Bye.